All right. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to cover another swift topic. This topic is related to the safety feature of SWIFT. Um, and it's called, it's unit three, lesson one. And it's called optionals. Remember that safety is one of the big goals of SWIFT. So the idea of safety is that you create apps that are safe to use and they don't crash, all right? Sometimes when you're creating apps, you have bugs and these bugs cause you problems, you know, whether it is logical bugs or sometimes it's a fatal bug where the application crashes. And uh, Swift provide an interesting solution to handle these bugs or the, these situations where your application can crash. So let's go ahead and get started. Nil exists in most programming languages or null. Sometimes you hear the value null. What does it mean? That means you define a variable and this variable does not have any data. And then when you try to access this variable, your application crashes. So in these situations, your code need to be able to handle variables that have the possibility of not containing any value or containing a nil value, right? So we're gonna take a look at these different examples and how Swift language can, or how Swift language handles these situations, all right? So in here, we have a structure. We talked in the previous lesson about structure. So we have a structure called book. This book has two value, two attributes, a name, it's a string, and the publication year. And the way we create instances of these structures, we just say first Harry Potter book. We use the initializers that comes with the struct and the, we pass the values for the name and then we pass the value for the year. That's okay, no issues here. Same thing with the second book in 1998 and then the title, we're fine. Here we create an array that contains the first book and the second book. So this scenario is fine, no issues, right? Now, the problem is, what if you have not published the book yet? That means that you're writing the book and you created uh, a, 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 a record of it, but that book is not published yet because the publishing take a process, take, you know, takes time to publish a book. So what do we pass for this publishing year? Do we pass a zero or do we pass a year, but this year we try to guess a year. That's not accurate because if you try to guess a year, it could be delayed or it could be published before, whatever, right? So you can't guess or you can't just put dummy data and assume that is going to be correct because at the end of the day, your data need to be accurate. Now, one way to do that is you put a nil value, all right? Nil is okay, is acceptable because we don't know that when this book is going to be published. It's coming, we don't know when it's going to be published and we don't wanna put, we don't wanna assume the, uh, the date because most likely it will be wrong. So in this case, if you put nil, you need to be able to handle these nil values. What will happen, you will get error if you specify nil. Why would you get error? Because when you go back to the structure definition in here, you notice that we have the publication year is an integer. So you can't pass a nil to this to the initializer because you're, you're supposed to pass an integer. So how do we solve this issue, how do we say, okay, I'm gonna pass a nil, but I want the structure to be, uh, to be able to handle this nil value. 
The solution to it is that we put a question mark. So by specifying a variable and its type, and it has a question mark afterward, that means this variable is an optional variable. An optional variable can have nil or can have value. So now when I pass, when I pass, when I create the, an instance of this book and pass nil, it's okay. And when you create an instance of this book and then you know the actual publishing year, it's okay, it will work both ways. So now this part will work. You can pass a value to it, the actual publishing year. And then this one, the publication year. So that's fine. This is what we had before. But now I can specify that I don't know when this book is going to be published. And until I know, I'm going to send and send you, when I create this book, I will send a nil value. Is that clear? Yes? All right. <clears throat> so how did we do it? We define a variable and what happens? We put a question mark, all right? This is how we define a regular integer. Server response code equal four zero four. So that's, a, that's okay, that's a regular. If you define a variable like that, that's fine. It's an integer and you're putting a value. But if you define the same variable, and now you put a nil, and you're gonna get an error. It's saying this is not acceptable. Nil requires a context, contextual, contextual type. What does it mean? It means it need to be optional, right? You can't just say I'm gonna put a nil in any variable type because it will say this is a problem. You need to define those variables to be optional. And how do we solve it? We solve it by specifying these variables are optionals by putting these question marks after the variable type. So that's how we define an optional variable. When do we define an optional variables? When we are sure that this variable may have a value and may not have a value. It either have a value or it could have a nil. In that case, you should define those variables as optionals. And you, in your code, you need to have the mechanism to handle those type of variables. And this is what we're gonna cover in the next slides. Is that clear? So how do we, <clears throat> If we have an optional variable, how do we get the value from this optional variable? Because there are two possibilities. One possibility is that you actually have a value and that's fine if that's the case, but there's another possibility that you could have an, a nil value. And if it has a nil value and you try to access it, your application crashes. And you don't want that because if your application crash after you submit it, you publish it on the app store, most likely people will not use your app again because they cannot trust it anymore, right? So <laughs> Swift provide a mechanism or several ways to get the value from an optional variable. One of them is called force and wrap, okay? So how, what do you mean by force and wrap? There is uh, let me check there is binding. Okay, we did that. All right. <clears throat> the first one is optional binding, okay, which is, okay, I think we covered it the other way around. But in this case, the first example here, it's okay. What are you doing? This is called optional binding. What does it mean that you, no, oh, sorry. You're checking if the value of the variable has a nil or not. So it says if a publication year does not equal to nil, that means there is a value in that variable. And now it's safe to get the value from that variable, process it, access it, print it, whatever you want. So this is one way you check if the publication year is not equal to nil, 
That means it's safe. Let actual year equal publication year. And you notice this explanation mark. What is this explanation mark? This explanation mark is force unwrapping. The first scenario is okay because I checked first. If it's not equal to null, that it has data in it. And if it has data in it, I can do force unwrapping, no problem. Why? Because when you do that, you already checked that you have a value in this variable. It's not nil, then it must have data, then I can use the explanation mark to force unwrap it. So this is one way to access the data. The other way to do that, if you don't do this like this in a safe manner, if you just right away, you try to access this, and if this has a nil value, your application will crash. And if it crashes, again, it's a big, big problem if you put it on the app store because you will be running your app and all of a sudden, boom, it disappears. And for users, they don't know what's going on with your application. Why is it crashing? All they know that your app is not trustworthy and I, cannot, I will not go back to it, all right? So in this case, an error, a runtime error could happen because if you don't have a value in this variable, it will crash. If you have a nil value, it will crash. Is that clear? So if you have, this is one way to access nil values or uh, optional variables. If you check first, if it does not equal nil, then you can process it easily and you use the force unwrap. This is the safe way to do it. We don't do this directly force unwrap it because the possibility of having a nil will cause your application to crash, all right? This is one way. The other way, <clears throat> we use optional wrapping. Because it's so common that we need to work with optional variables, Swift has some shortcuts that simplify explicit comparison to nil. Yani badal man ool, if this variable does not equal to nil, we have a, a shortcut or another way to do it. And that's what we call optional binding. So the way it works with optional binding, we say, if let constant variable, the new variable, equals some optional variable, this statement will give you true or false based on this assignment. And if it, was, it's, if it does not contain nil, this constant name will have the value that you have in this optional variable. All right, it's a little bit confusing, but when we look, when we look at the example, you'll understand it. So, but you need to remember, if let some variable equal some optional variable. This happens if this, if this, if this some optional variable does not have a nil, then this one will have the value in it that I can process it inside that block. So let's take a look at this example. So we say if let unwrapped year equal book, the structure that we've created, publication year. Remember that variable was optional. So if it has a value, if it's not nil, we print the new, this one here, unwrapped publication year, we print out the value, which is basically whatever was stored in this or whatever is stored in this publication year. So this is another way to access optional variable. First, we compare it to a nil. Here, we compare it to what we can, we do optional unwrapping. We say, if let unwrap variable, any variable that you want, any name that you want, but usually we could use, we could use the same names, equal the book structure, and then the optional variable that in that book. If it does not equal to nil, this variable will have the value, and then you can process it, print it, or whatever you want. So that's the safest way, one, one another way to access, uh, optional variable. Else, if it is nil, then we print the book does not have an official publication date yet. Why? 
because this one, if, we, if it was nil, this will statement will be false. And then here you will print this one. All right. Is it clear? Let me pause for a minute. All right, so let's take a look at this book class structure and then see the possibilities of what happens. So as, as you recall, if you go back to the definition of the structure book, struct book, we have two parameters, name and publication year. This publication year, it's what? It is optional, so it could have value or no. And then we've created different instances of that book. Let's take a look at this first one, the first scenario. So when I create first Harry Potter book, what are we sending for the name? Harry Potter, the uh, Sorcerer Stone. And the publication year is what? 1997. So does the publication year has a value or not in this case? It does. What is the value? 1997, sir. So, let's see the optional binding. We go back to here. And let's take a look at that. Remember the year, what was, what was the year? 1997, all right? So if we say, if let unwrap publication year equal book, dot publication year. What is the value here so far? 1997, right? So because the first instance had 1997. So this one is not nil. So what happened? This condition becomes true. And the 1997 that is stored in here will be stored in this one, all right? So when I say print the book was published in, what happens here? What do we print? 1997. Is that clear? Let's take a look at the second scenario that we had, or the third scenario, unannounced book. When we say book equal REPL and lions, but the publication year here is what? Nil. So what happened in this scenario? If you go back here, and then we say, if let unwrap publication year equal book dot publication year. What is the value here now? Nil. So this will give you a false. This statement will not be executed. What will be executed? The else statement. And in the else statement, we print the book does not have any, any official publication. Is clear? Yes? All right, another, another uh, you could have sometimes functions that returns nil. I'll give you an example. In this case, a string equal one, two, three, and we use the int initializer to, with the string parameter, to return, to create an integer variable. Type in this case, I put one, two, three. Is one, two, three a valid integer number? Is it a valid integer number or not? Yes. So this one is fine. You'll be fine. But what if you try to convert text into a number? What will happen? It will give you a nil value because this is a not valid number. So you need to be able to handle this situation. So int could re return, it's an option, it would return you an optional value. And then you need to handle this in your code. Another way, I'm just gonna go through this quickly because the important part I already discussed, okay? Another way you could have a function that returns a nil or not a nil, all right? So here you can, if you wanna specify a function that returns a nil, we, you know, we explained functions before, so say function text return string with a question mark. That means it's either, it will return either a nil or an actual value. <clears throat> you could use optionals with initializers. So we have a toddler struct and it has a string and an integer. Toddlers, they have age range. 
So we check in the initializer, we're creating an initializer, the, the string uh, is the birth name, and then how old this person is or this baby is. So if the age is less than 12 or the age, sorry, if the uh, month of the age is less than 12 or the month old is greater than 36, then we return nil. Yani if it is less than 12 months of your year old, means it's an infant. Or if it is more than 30, 60 uh, month old, that means it's not a child, it's not a toddler anymore. We return nil. All right. Otherwise, we return the name and we set the name of the attribute to the birth name and the month old to the attribute month old. How do we make an initializer return an optional? We will put that question mark after the init comment. Again, this is might not use, you might not use this for a while, but in case that you are in a situation where you could return uh, an instance of a struct or a class, this is how you do it. You put the question mark after the init keyword. <clears throat> so this is how we do handle initializers that could return a nil value. So here, possible toddler, we create it, we passing 14. And then if let toddler possible toddler, again, because it's returning an optional, we have to have either it's not nil or if let keyword. By the way, you could use let or var the same way. Then if it is, if you got actually an instant and it's not nil, we print it out. Otherwise, the age you specify of the toddler is not between one and three years old age, all right? The last thing I will go over, and I'll go over this quickly. Uh, sometimes you have optional chaining. What does that mean? It means that you have an optional, and an optional, and an optional. This is called optional chaining. So in this example, we have three structs. The first struct is a person. It has age and residence. The residence type is resident struct. So you have another uh, struct. This one is optional. And the residence also is, it has an address attribute and it's an optional. And the address has an apartment number and it's an optional. The street name is an optional. All of these are optional. So if I want to add, if I wanted to access this apartment, I will have to ask as the person first, the residence, the address, and then the apartment. So three levels. And since this is optional, and this is optional, and this is optional, you could use one if let statement to access those three optionals. And this is what we call optional chaining. So one way to do that is you say, if let residence, that person, that residence, so that's the first level. The other level, if address equal residence, that address, that's the second level. If let the apartment equal the address apartment, that's the third level, then I print the apartment. But that is a long three nested if statement. Swift provide you a better way to do that. This is the pyramid doom, it's called. You just simply, if let the apartment equal person, that resident, optional, that address, optional, and then the apartment. If this, if this is not nil, this is not nil, and this is not nil, then you will get the value in the apartment, and then you print it. All right. <clears throat> The last thing in this PowerPoint, you could specify some variables that are unwrapped optionals. That means I don't need to specify the question mark, I specify explanation mark. In this case only, you could use it if it will be initialized right away and I provide you a value is provided right away after you define it. Because these are outlet, when you remember when you create the outlet and then, uh, and then you have, when, when the view controller got, gets loaded, all of these will have values in it. 
So I don't need to worry about providing the explanation mark. All right. That's it. I know it's a it's a strange subject for if you haven't used optionals before, but you need to be for at the first level, you need to be aware of it and know when you see an optional value variables, how to handle it, how to you could use it, you could check if it is not nil, first of all. You could use optional binding. That's the preferred method, right? And don't force unwrap any variable that is unoptional, but you're not sure about the value that it contains. Because if there's a possibility that it has an error, it has a nil value, your application could crash, all right? Masi, we're done with the optional. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me.